foods, foods that are high in vitamin A and B, vitamin E, foods in antioxidant, uh, and phenolic, and flaxseed. So vitamin D is normally metabolized in our liver and kidneys into the form 125 dihydroxy vitamin D, which has the ability to regulate the expression of over 100 genes. Nutrition research has found an inverse relationship between levels of vitamin D and concentration of TNF alpha. 75% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D, and this deficiency has been related to increased inflammation and depression when paired with increased inflammation. In a study, 60% of suicidal patients were deficient in vitamin D, and those that were deficient had increased inflammatory markers. On the flip side, vitamin D has been shown to reduce T cell production of pro-inflammatory IL-6 and can neutralize the effects of IL-1 alpha and beta by blocking their receptors. Vitamin E also is able to reduce IL-6 and limits the toxic effects of reactive oxygen species released during inflammation. alpha tocopherol the form of vitamin E most absorbed and accumulated in our body, has antioxidant function. It has the ability to intercept free radicals, which prevents chain lipid destruction, preventing cardiovascular disease. It also protects LDL, which is low-density lipoprotein, which transports transport fats in the bloodstream from oxidation, which prevents atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of fatty plaques in the blood. Now we're going to talk about phenolics. Phenolics are plant metabolites that are necessary for the reproduction and growth of plants. They are also produced in defense against pathogens. They have gained increased interest due to their variety of bioactivity, like anti-inflammatory, anti-mutagenic, and antioxidant. Predominant phenolics are hydrobenzoic and hydroxycinematic, and they have antioxidant and free radical scavenging ability. This is important because some cancers are caused by oxidative damage to biomolecules by free radicals. An average of 35% of overall cancer-related mortality can be attributed to diet, and an inverse relationship has been shown between sufficient consumption of fruits and vegetables and risk of developing cancer. A high intake of vegetables especially those that are cruciferous or relating to the cabbage family, have been shown to reduce the likelihood of developing prostate cancer. Flavonoids are especially important, and they are basically a group of over 4,000 compounds of phenolics, and they are present in all sorts of fruits and vegetables, especially those that have dark, deep colors like leafy greens and berries. They have uh, antioxidant and free radical scavenging abilities, that can inhibit the growth of tumors um, and induce apoptosis. By eating these phenolics, we can gain uh, the free radical scavenging abilities and antioxidant functions that can uh, have us to have a healthy, healthy weight and also have a healthy life uh, inhibiting diseases. So it's been shown that consuming a diet with flaxseed can, can have a beneficial effect on your health. There was a study that had participants consume a flaxseed-focused diet for a week, and it was shown that this diet inhibited TNF-alpha and IL-6 by about 30%. After those four weeks, they added fish oil supplements for another four weeks, and after the total eight weeks, there was about an 80% decrease. Hi, my name is Mom. Today I'll be talking to you about exercise. Subcutaneous and bristle white right after stitching or the hypodermis in the right abdominal fat supplies your energy by means of astrocytes in the right astral tissue. Excess energy is stored within the astrocytes as triglycerides. So then through exercise, the right astral tissue decreases presence. This can be seen through by catecholamines breaking down the triglycerides, which result in fatty acids being carried into the cells and muscle through the blood vessels. Now without the exercise or too much energy being stored up within the astrocytes,
research shows that moderate exercise increases the prevalence of anti-inflammatory cytokines. Now, when you exercise, make sure you research the right ways to exercise. For example, make sure to take protein before and directly after you exercise, so that the muscles will repair themselves, and so the amino acids you've broken down can be replaced.